And, you know, New York Times, all of them, they'll never cover things in a balanced way. They'll never talk about the cops who are being killed. They'll never talk about the other side of the story. But applying it to what you just said about how God transformed you, the transformative power of God. Not only do we not want to mess with the system of the family nuclear system, we have a very powerful way of, of seeing it. The, we have discovered that the best cure for COVID-19 is God-given immune system. Amen. 98% of the people recover from it, not by a drug or anything else, but by their immune system. And your immune system is a miraculous gift from God. It's an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. You know that the family unit is the immune system there of civilization. There you go. It's, it's the white blood cells that fight off things. Right. It's the mom and the dad. And why would anyone want to destroy it? Right. They have these outward platitudes, don't they, Peter? But the heart is we want control. But it goes right Stop. back to Psalm 2. Why did the heathen rage and the people plot a vain thing? You know, get off my back, God. I don't want you telling me how to live my life. It's really that simple, right? Like, yes. we want, we, we end up doing the same thing Satan did. Oh, all those other people, that's just a crutch. They need God, but not me, because I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to ignore thousands of years of wisdom that's been accumulated over all that time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just and, so and prideful. I, you know, here's how an evangelist talks a little bit. I know. I don't want to dominate the conversation. You, if I'm talking too much, it's y'all's fault. No, we love no, it. No, you need excited. to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but we have the best message the world has ever heard. Right. We have the superior in every category. I don't care what metric you apply. The Christian gospel Absolutely. applies the most instant solution to every single thing you're going through. Right. It, it will deal with depression. It will deal with addiction. It will deal with anger. It will deal with jealousy. It will deal with guilt. It goes on and on and on and on until uh, Paul had to pray. He, he asked the Ephesians. He said, you know, and, I, and I'm transliterating, but I'm not violating the context. Paul said one time, I want you to pray for me that God will open my mouth that I may make known the mystery of the gospel. Let me amplify that. This thing is so big, so good, so obedient, so all-encompassingly wonderful. It is exactly what you need on every level I can imagine, that I'm dealing with the frustration that words fail me mm -hmm. when I try to describe what would happen to you. I once stood in front of a very violent group of gangsters. They came into our tent, and, and I'm sitting there, and I said, I would to God that I had one gift I, I would to God that I had one gift and one gift alone, the ability to reach in my soul and take a handful of the peace and joy that I feel in Christ mm -hmm. and put it on my hand against your chest so that you would sense it for just mm -hmm. even a minute. Mm -hmm. And then your addiction would mean nothing. Your anger would mean nothing. This would literally be a, 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 a day of revolution. You know, the Bible, Jesus gave us a sample of this when he said there was a man that bought a field that nobody wanted. It had tree trunks. It had mess. But while he was scoping the land, he noticed there was a treasure. He kicked something around and there was a treasure that was a thousand times more valuable than the dirt. So he went and he liquidated all of his assets in order to buy that piece of ground. This is what happens when you meet Jesus. Absolutely. This is why every Christian that's watching me right now, you need to shake off your embarrassment. You got nothing to be embarrassed about. Right. You did the best, the smartest, the most amazing thing you could have ever done for yourself, your friends, and your children when you right. surrender to Jesus. Right. And that is why I am not ashamed of the gospel right. of Christ. When you were telling that story, I was reminded of a friend of ours named Dave Cape who was in South Africa during the uh, apartheid and all the, the terrible riots that were going on. He's a, he's a white man. And he was going into Soweto, which was one of the roughest areas yes. uh, where they were they were putting tires around people and lighting them on fire. You know, he, 
it was just a horrendous thing. And he was cornered like that by a group of men that were very hostile towards him. And the Lord downloaded words of knowledge for every one of the guys in the wow. gangs. And they knew it was just a supernatural moment wow. that they got down on their knees, they got saved, and then they became his bodyguards as he was going around and preaching the gospel. You know, and it sounds too hard to believe, but we, we know that that, that that happens on a regular basis. If we show the Lord that we're, we're stepping out in faith and not presumption or, or prejudice or trying to right. bang anybody with the Bible, Jesus didn't have to do that. You know, we used to have a thing in church called Testimony Night. Y'all are too young to remember these, <laughs> but I will tell you something. Um, no comment on that yeah. one. Yeah. But you I'll tell you something about film. that. You know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, his name shall be called wonderful. Amen. And that, you know what that means? It, it, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Because you start, you get any group of believers together in a room and you say to them, tell me what the Lord has done for you. Yeah. And if the right person begins to testify, you understand why it said in Revelation they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb right. and the word of their testimony, and they did not esteem their life to be valuable. Right. Now, let me tell you, I, I look at it. There was a guy who was the Billy Graham of his day. His name was E. Stanley Jones. He was on the cover of the early version of Time magazine as the greatest missionary in the world. And he used to do on public radio uh, a thing called a forum. And in this forum, he would challenge the four most intellectual atheists of the United States to come to an open debate at a round table. But he always used one little trick. He always advertised who the four atheists were going to be, but he would never tell the audience who was going to be on his side of the table. And so the, the day when they would go on radio, and there were eight of them, plus E. Stanley Jones moderating, the atheists could give all their argument. He always used, for his side, new converts. <laughs> not teachers, not philosophers. <laughs> new converts. So some guy from Harvard would get up and give all the history of the corrupt popes and go through all the litany of the arguments, and then suddenly it would be this kid's turn, and he said, well, all I know is once I was blind Amen. and now I can see <laughs> and now I have the joy of the Lord. Right. My life Amen. was wrecked. And, and he knew that the testimony right. of the power of God is such an amazing thing. Yeah. And, you know, we're losing America's uh, attention for all the wrong reasons, folks. We've got the one thing that it, it, these people that are screaming right now, have nothing to say and the people who are being quiet have everything to say right. we have the one message if we're going to heal racism we got to raise our hand hey you better let me talk right now if you want to heal racism bring me in if you want to deal with virus bring me in if you want to deal with division bring us in and the local church is a miracle yeah, yeah. Amen. the local church is a miracle and maybe this shutdown woke us up. I hope so. Maybe, maybe all of these Christians that couldn't go to Wednesday night service, never could get up. Or, I worked late Saturday night. I can't get up. And all of a sudden, you can't go. 